All right, guys, today we're going to see Frank Proctor, and he's going to talk to us about two important things, malfunctions and don't have them. Hey, what's up, shooters? Frank Proctor with Way of the Gun Performance Shooting. All right, so we're doing a new season of Trigger Time TV, and uh, about a month or so ago, I threw up some, uh, you know, something on Facebook. It's like, hey, what would you guys like me to cover in some of the segments? One of them that came up was uh, rifle malfunctions. So we will talk about some rifle malfunctions, but first, let's talk about how not to have them. I think that's more key, right? You can get really good at clearing malfunctions, or you can figure out what's wrong with your rifle, fix it, and not have malfunctions. Um, first of all, let's just look at the fact that this is not a new system, okay? So I'm a fan of performance shooting, also a fan of any gear or modifications to the gun that makes it easier on the shooter to perform so long as it's always reliable, okay? Um, this gun has lived a hard life. Okay? I'm not sure exactly how long I've had this gun, and not sure exactly how many rounds are in it or have been through it, but somewhere around 30,000 on this particular gun, and I'm just kind of basing that off of how many classes I've done with it, about how many rounds I shoot in a class, some of my training sessions, et cetera, right? So uh, what I did when I got this thing was I put some oil on it, trying out some new oil, so I put some oil on it right when I got it and in, in some key places there and ran it until it stopped, until it had a malfunction. You know, just a little torture test. Now, <laughs> I posted some pictures of that up on Facebook as well, and I got a lot of the, uh, oh my God, your drill sergeant's gonna die, smoke yourself, do some push-ups. Well, I outrank the drill sergeants now, so it's, uh, I don't have to do push-ups anymore for that. And I've got a little more time under my belt, a lot more time on one of these rifles, and I know what it will and won't take, and that was a torture test, by the way. But what I do know is what, with that particular oil, this thing being in and out of a couple different deserts like five or six times, bouncing around in a Pelican case with no padding, um, dusty, dirty, dry, that it would work for that long. That's good knowledge to take away from it, right? Um, now, I, I did my share of, of spec cleaning those things as a private, and then later on in the Q course, after you get done with the phase, kind of started figuring that out, you were cleaning to time, not to standard, all right? <laughs> the gun would work or, or wouldn't work, well before the four hours that you were gonna spend cleaning those guns, okay? Uh, on my basic training folks, right? Which I don't have a front side post on there. Here, here's one, all right? Nope, go clean it, dust in the front side post. What? What's that got to do with the gun working? That was just punishment for privates, man. All right, but now that we're not privates anymore, we know what it takes to make the gun work. If you are building this gun, this is where people will start making some, some errors building their own guns. Start looking at the gas system, right? If you have a malfunction, be one of the first places I start looking at there, right? Uh, if you built a gun, make sure the gas block is lined up over the gas port, and it's tight, it's not gonna move. Uh, then start tracking down through here. Heck, let's look at this one, right? This one's nice and filthy. I'm gonna get dirty, all right? <laughs> then you can start, take a little peek at that, and see how filthy that one is, and this one works. Let's pull a clean one out, start looking at some stuff there, right? So then start checking back there, you have, like say, short stroke type problems or something like that, gas key. I've seen a few gas keys come unstake, get a little loose. A little tug on that will let you know whether or not it's good. Um, gas rings. You know, gas rings could miss a line and cause weak gas or whatever. However, I don't know, man. Um, I ran a rifle one time, didn't even know it. It's a BCM uh, gun that I had. And uh, I pulled the gun apart to do something and noticed I only had two gas rings left on this thing. It's like, wow, where's the other one? It was back down here in the back of the uh, carrier there, just all smashed up. The gun was still running 100% with no foul malfunctions there. Uh, but in general, what we'd like to do is we could you know, line those up to where you know, all the, gas, the slots in the gas rings, 180 degrees apart. Another area uh, on the bolt assembly there to look at for some reliability is a stronger extractor spring. Most quality guns these days are coming with an extra power extractor spring there. That definitely helps. Um, back to the gas ring, another thing to take a peek there. Uh, if you don't want to worry about aligning gas rings, there's a McFarlane gas ring. Uh, I get those from Brown L's there, but it's uh, just a one piece gas ring, right? It kind of threads on, kind of like a key ring there. Never have to worry about those uh, coming unaligned. You know, th those are usually our biggest problems there. Gas, okay? Uh, weak gas will cause this thing to, to, uh, to malfunction. It's gas operated, so it's gotta have solid gas. Uh, then another area to look at there is magazines. All right, so you're getting a lot of double feeds or whatever. It's either a weak stroke back through there because there's not enough gas, um, or a possible ma uh, magazine issue. But there's a lot of really good magazines out there these days you don't have any problems with. All the polymer ones, Seem to be 100%. I've been using the Troy ones um, since I think January 2012-ish or so. 
no problems out of those. Um, really dig them because they're size, weight, stack up real nice and thin, and they've always been 100% reliable. Right, so there's just a few things to look at so that you don't have to get really good at clearing malfunctions. In our next segment, we'll talk about ways to clear them. Thanks, y'all. Trigger Time TV is brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters, Troy Industries, Troy Defense, BCM, Bravo Company USA, Nemo Arms, Lucid Optics, Drago Gear, Trigger Tech, Primary Weapon Systems, EOTech, Mayflower Research and Consulting, Closed captioning provided by Wiley X and Trigger Time TV ammunition provided by Summit Ammunition. We would like to dedicate today's show to the men and women of the United States military and law enforcement. The people that stand in the gap and keep our country free. God bless America.